Hi there, I'm Logan Medish, and this is High Caliber History. Revolvers made by J.H. Danson Brothers are some of the most visually distinctive guns to come out of the South during the Civil War. Dance revolvers lack a recoil shield on both sides of the gun, giving their frames an extremely flat look, which makes them easy to identify both at, say, a gun show or in an historic photograph like this one of Geronimo, who's holding a dance revolver in this photo taken around 1890. James Henry Dance and his brothers were descended from a Revolutionary War color bearer who served under General George Washington himself. The family originated in Virginia and migrated to North Carolina and Alabama, where they stayed until James headed to Texas not long before the Civil War. A year later, his three brothers, two sisters, and a cousin joined him, where they purchased 900 acres and opened up a lumber mill and machine shop across the street from the home that they purchased in 1858. When the Civil War broke out, all of the male members of the family enlisted with the Confederacy in 1861, serving with the 35th Texas Cavalry Browns Regiment. Because revolvers were in such high demand, a lot of important people, such as newspaper editors like the one at Houston's Tri-Weekly Telegraph, noted in an editorial, quote, However much we want men in the field, it is certain good and well-skilled mechanics in pistol factories are worth ten times as much as in the field. Eventually, Texas Governor Francis Lubbock gave in and exempted the dance factory workers from military service. This included the Dance brothers George Perry, David Ethelred, and Isaac Claudius, as well as their cousin Harrison Perry. James Henry, who was a lieutenant, stayed with the cavalry. All told, 35 soldiers were detailed to the Dance factory, 23 of which came from the 35th Texas Cavalry, Brown's Regiment. Production on the revolvers began in 1862, in East Columbia, Texas, where the first guns were completed by mid-July. Many contemporaries believed the dance guns to be a superior design to any others on the market, north or south. In the September 5, 1862 issue of the Houston Tri-Weekly Telegraph, the editors called the guns, quote, superior to Colt's best. They will kill a Yankee every pop unless you hit him in the conscience, which is ballproof. The exact number of dance revolvers to be made is unknown. Now, the estimates put this somewhere between 325 and 500 guns. Visual cues, such as the lack of the recoil shield, have been used to identify the guns because none of the guns that have ever surfaced bear the name dance on them. So you have to use these visual cues to identify the guns. Other tips to identify a dance revolver are the rather large, square, thick and heavy trigger guards and the larger than average dies used to mark the serial numbers. On that note, not all of the guns have serial numbers. Some have been observed with serial shapes instead. No matter what the serial markings are, however, you can expect to find them on just about every single part of the gun. The cylinder, the hammer, the loading lever, and the triple juncture of barrel, frame, and trigger guard. And the majority were made in 44 caliber, with their overall length being the same as a Colt Dragoon, but the cylinders match that of a Colt 1860 Army, and not a Dragoon. As a result, the barrels, which have seven lands and grooves, and a clockwise spin and no gain to the twist, are actually longer than the ones seen on a Dragoon. They also produced some 36 caliber models, which made them the only company in the Confederacy to produce both calibers during the Civil War. Now, it's long been held that the company's decision to relocate to Anderson, Texas, was to avoid being shelled by Union gunboats on the Brazos River. While that may be true, it was also largely due to the fact that the company had been officially acquired by the Confederate government which just so happened to have an ordinance works in Anderson, Texas. Acquisition of the company likely happened in early 1864, but it took some time to coordinate things and get everything back into production. On June 16, 1864, James Henry Dance was given leave to go, quote, to Anderson for the purpose of settling with Captain Good for machinery sold the government. Production resumed that same month, 
with the final record of production being 46 guns on June 6th. And on April 5th, 1865, just four days before General Robert E. Lee would surrender his Confederate Army of Northern Virginia at Appomattox, there's a sales receipt for one final pistol that was sold to an officer who was stationed at the Ordnance Works in Anderson. With the war over, the male members of the Dance family went back to their peacetime professions. Their family legacy does still loom large, though. Die-hard enthusiasts and collectors of their guns can still make a pilgrimage of sorts to stand where they stood. The home that the family purchased in 1858 was occupied continuously by Dance family members until 1908. It's still a beautiful home, and there's a plaque outside that discusses the history and importance of the house. Their machine shop and lumber mill was destroyed by a storm in 1900. Nothing remains of it except for some nondescript brick foundations if you know where to look, uh, and a plaque closer to the road noting its former location. The guns are highly prized by collectors, with recent examples selling as high as almost $200,000. As such, one should exercise extreme caution when considering the purchase of a supposed original dance revolver especially the rarer 36 caliber version. Many fakes have been made by simply grinding the recoil shield off of a Colt revolver, but this is further complicated by the fact that there are at least three 36 caliber and one 44 caliber known to be genuine dance revolvers that actually do have recoil shields. East Columbia, Texas is but a tiny dot on the map today with fewer than 100 residents, but it's certainly rich in history. It's the only town that can claim Stephen F. Austin, Sam Houston, Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, and many other notable historic figures have walked its streets. In the gun community, you could probably also add that the Dance Brothers qualify as other notable historic figures, and I doubt that anyone would challenge you on that. Thanks for watching. I'm Logan Medish for High Caliber History, and have a great day. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you enjoy the channel and the content here and you think you've got even a dollar's worth of knowledge out of it, head on over to the Patreon page and become a patron there. We've got a bunch of different levels and some awesome swag that you can get as well. There's a link to it in the description. Thanks and have a great day.